Someone's like, hey, here's this way to bring down inflammation. Don't just be like, that's good. Or be like, well, that's stupid. Inflammation's great. Ask that next deeper level of question. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. And I have to ask you a question. Is inflammation always bad? The answer is no. Sorry, didn't give you a chance to think that one through. Let's talk about this because there are a ton of industries and people and celebrities and doctors that are always trying to get you to buy products or do protocols or pay them money so they can help you squash inflammation. And gee whiz, inflammation seems like it's everywhere. The gut is inflamed, your body is inflamed, your joints are inflamed, you name it, it's inflamed, and it's always a bad thing, and it's always a problem, and more anti-inflammation always seems to be better. Problem, there is not just one type of inflammation. There are at least two categories of inflammation that concern us in order to try to open up this intellectual conversation to learn some shit from. The first is local inflammation like my elbow is inflamed. The second is systemic inflammation, which you can do with a variety of blood markers and other scans where we're saying, yeah, like your systemic inflammation is a little higher than we like to see because of X, Y, Z reasons. At the very least, those two things are different and potentially how you would address them or if you even would are also different. Next point, inflammation. So first of all, there's not just one type of inflammation. First fallacy or part of this problem. Second is that inflammation can be a good thing. What? What? How the f How is that possible that it could be a good thing? Well, hold on a sec. Local muscle inflammation, the delayed onset soreness and tightness and weirdness you feel a few days after your muscles or a few hours after your muscles get trained, is a big integral critical part of the remodeling and upgrading that your muscles receive in order to become bigger and stronger. And we know for a fact, pretty much, that if you take high-dose, powerful anti-inflammatories around your workout window, you reduce the propensity for muscle growth from that workout. What? But I thought eh, squashing inflammation was a good thing in all cases because it's always bad. Well, it turns out that's not the case. There is even a very convincing body of research that if you break your arm or pull a tendon off the bone and you get surgery to fix those things, the recovery from that traumatic injury, not even just muscle growth, bone growth, tendon growth, that recovery can be muted to some extent, slowed down, less complete if you rely heavily on anti-inflammatories much of the time versus if you take them gingerly in the first few days to really keep the crazy swelling down. And then as soon as you're feeling better, you either reduce the dose significantly or you stop which is to say high anti-inflammatory use leads to incomplete or a reduced rate of bone and tendon and connective tissue healing and ultra-structural revision. Uh, that's not good. But I guess like we thought inflammation was all bad, but it turns out it's critical to not only muscle growth in its fullest potential, but also injury healing. Okay, interesting. It gets complicated. Short bouts of local inflammation are very important to heal all sorts of damage, including wound healing, bone and joint healing, and muscle healing that causes hypertrophy of really all those systems and gets you back to normal and even above. So is that it? Inflammation's good, but is it bad? Of course it can be bad. Inflammation is usually bad when it's excessive by a long shot, even locally, if your elbow is this big, <laughs> two feet out, is probably too much inflammation. The body's inflammatory response is a general response that's uh, designed to heal, but sometimes so much inflammatory response enters that the pressure on the entire structure and the actual damage itself, because of the inflammation and all the fluid that it brings in is so high, it's actually doing a little bit of secondary damage and potentially limiting the healing process. So sometimes even local inflammation can be reduced a little bit when it's excessive. And that's your doctor's decision in the injury process as to when to make that call. And usually they're very, very good at it. But another thing is, is inflammation is systemically high. Often that's a bad thing. Often that means your health could be better and maybe the inflammation could be brought down temporarily with drugs. But the better answer after that 
is to look at why chronic, sorry, why inflammation is high systemically. Because a lot of times it can be like, wow, like, actually your liver is not doing the things it's supposed to be doing. And glad that we did this inflammation test. Now we can fix your liver and the inflammation will go down and all that stuff. So inflammation can be bad when it's excessive, often bad when it's systemic, and especially bad when it is chronic. If your biceps get inflamed after training and then a day later they're no longer inflamed and then you train them hard and then their cycle happens, shit, you're winning. Awesome. Just acute bouts of inflammation are good for you. They make you stronger and more resilient and are part of the adaptive process itself. But if the inflammation is chronic, it's always hanging around. And a way that does that without driving you completely insane is if it's chronic and low level. If inflammation is chronic, which means it's kind of there all the time, if it's low level, that's a good thing in the sense that it's not fucking making your life hell right away, but a bad thing in the sense that if it's low level enough but above baseline, it's always there and you can barely or can't tell, so you don't do anything about it. You might not even know about it. And lastly, if it's systemic, that spreads out the detection problem even more. People who are unhealthy, especially people who have metabolic syndrome and are highly obese, tend to have a systemic, low-level, chronic, total body inflammation. Now that shit is really fucking bad. That demands attention of a medical professional. It demands a rigorous course of action to try to undo the bad stuff, like being of very large physical size and high level of adiposity, low physical activity, poor nutrition, uh, not taking various medications, having too high of a blood pressure, so on and so forth. These are the things that need fixing because in that context, inflammation is actually very bad. What do you get when PhD sports scientists collaborate with pro bodybuilders? The most effective muscle growth training app ever made. Get yours now. TLDR, if you hear about inflammation, someone's like, hey, here's this way to bring down inflammation. Don't just be like, that's good. Or be like, well, that's stupid. Inflammation's great. Ask that next deeper level of questions. Now, hold on a sec. What kind of inflammation are we trying to bring down? Are we trying to bring down inflammation during wound healing, even though it's not excessive and just a little bit annoying? Bad idea. Don't do it. Let the inflammation do its thing, which includes almost all muscle and strength stuff. Even if you have surgery or get into a really bad accident, you have to heal, most of the inflammation you're going to get is good. You don't want to try to squash it all because it is temporary and it is healing you. But if, if the inflammation is excessive, way too much, impinging on various other structures and stuff like that, but especially if it's low level and systemic and chronic, then yeah, that anti-inflammatory stuff might be something to look for. And the last thing I'll say about this is the following. In a treatment of patient sense, sometimes it's smart to just deal with the thing when it is, but it's also smart to try to figure out why it was. If you come to the hospital with a massive headache, they don't exactly go through the 18 trillion things of screening to find out why the headache is. They're going to be like, well, how bad's the pain? You're saying, 10 out of 10, I'm fucking screaming. They're going to try to give you headache medicine, I promise. Does Motrin or morphine, depending on the intensity of your headache, actually treat the underlying potential cause of your headache? In most cases, the answer is no. But first, we squash the symptoms, then we try to look for the cause, then we squash the cause, then it doesn't come up again. The same thing may be true with an inflammatory response. If someone says, hey, look, you can take this herb and it'll bring your total body inflammation down, that might be a good thing if normally the body produces too much inflammation and that's a bad thing. But that's not likely to be the case. What's likely to be the case is that because of bad health for a variety of other reasons, you're overweight, you're not physically active enough, your diet's not healthy enough, you have too much psychological and physical stress in your life, then your inflammation is high. And if you take that herb temporarily, hey, shit, you're squashing some systemic chronic inflammation, and that's a good thing probably. But what's even a better thing is, yeah, take the herb and shit like that, but also try to figure out where is this high inflammation coming from? Could just be genetic. Your doctor's like, you're doing everything right. Some people just have a high chronic inflammatory response. And because you're taking this herb or this new medication, you're just going to live longer and happier because your, your, your body just built like fuck shit. Somebody, God was like, ah, fuck you, zap. <laughs> you get chronic inflammation, you little bitch, get out of here, go be an embryo, right? All right, fuck that. That happens. But in most cases, that's not the case. In most cases, it's some shit you could fix that if you start attending to that, getting into better health in a bunch of other ways, 
you can eventually still take the herb and have really low inflammation, or just not have to take the herb anymore because you fix the underlying problem. So when everyone tries to give, give you the solution first, say, this is the problem inflammation and we have the solution, try to take back a few steps, open up your thinking a bit and see if you can do just a little bit better. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.